fonts. How bloody annoying are fonts? Seriously, it's so hard to come up with good font combinations on your website. And then when you want to use a premium font, for example, you need to get a subscription. And that's cool. If, if it's worth it for you to get a subscription, do it. Otherwise, you're probably like 99% of the other people who probably use just Google fonts. And Google fonts is cool as well. That's fine. That That's easy. It's free. And that's that's sweet. But you find that all these websites are using the same fonts and it just gets a bit boring, okay? Now, I'm going to show you in this video how to use any font on your website. And uh, I'm also going to show you a little trick if you'd like to, in your test environment, maybe download a, a premium paid font and use that. Now, a prerequisite before I go any further. This is purely for educational purposes. I do not recommend you to use this on a production server because these fonts that I may be showing you how to get will be paid fonts. So you could potentially open yourself up to some issues. So with that being said, let's get started and let's uh, see how easy it is to uh, use any font on your website. Okay, so if you're not familiar with how fonts work on websites, it's pretty much like this. Fonts are typically installed on the computer that's accessing the website. So if you, when you build a website, choose a font that every single computer has installed on it, then that's no problem. Everyone will see the same font. However, if you say choose a font that only works on Windows or only exists on Windows 10, then you might not see it on a Mac. So to get around this, we obviously can use Google, Google fonts. We can use things like Typekit, which is a subscription for fonts to display on your website or fonts.com, all that sort of stuff. What I'm going to show you how to do is how to get premium paid fonts. Um, just find them online and use them on your website. Now, as I said before, this is just for testing and educational purposes, and I would definitely not recommend you use this on a production website. So with that being said, let's just have a look for a premium font. I know there is a premium font called Sophia Pro, and if you click on it, it's, uh, it's on Adobe Fonts. It's quite a nice font. Now, what if we want to use this on our test website just to see what it looks like? And, you know, when we may not use it, um, but we just want to see how it looks. Well, you could obviously sign up to Typekit or to Adobe Fonts, but they charge about $170 a year now. Um, or you could use another way. So all you need to do is first go onto Google and type something like Sophia Pro GitHub. Okay, now make sure you put the name of the font and then you put GitHub second. Click on Google search. And then what you'll see is on GitHub, this is just a code repository. It's where people store the code of their websites. And there are some people that have websites that are they share the code with everyone. So you can actually see their code. But these people are actually using Sophia Pro on their website already. So we can easily get Sophia Pro from their project and then use it on ours. So how do we do it? Well, the first thing is we just have to go into the project and try and find the font. So right now we've clicked onto Sophia Pro Regular, which is just one of the fonts in the font family. But we want all of the Sophia Pro fonts, for example. So if you click on fonts there, you should see all these fonts here. Now you could just say right click, hit save link as, and then save it and then open it up and oh, it's not working. It actually won't load. There's some sort of corruption with GitHub when you're trying to download fonts directly from the repository. So the other thing you can do to get around this is to install the repository on your computer. Now, if you're using Windows 10 like me, you want to download a program called Git for Windows. And this will allow your computer to download GitHub repositories or any Git repositories. So if you just download and install this on your computer, it will then give you the command line interface to be able to download GitHub repositories. So once you've done that, what you want to do is then let's go into, let's go and create a new folder. I'm just going to call it my test font and open it up. And I'm going to open up terminal in this folder. So if you don't know how to open up terminal, you just need to basically either go into command prompt and you can uh, say go to CD desktop 
and then you go to CD and the name of the folder is my test font and then now that you're inside that folder because we have git installed we could clone this repository so what you do is you can do git clone https github.com forward slash William Jung forward slash W capital lowercase e and then capital J dot git you have to add dot git to the end of it okay once you do that you'll see that it's downloading the repository onto your actual computer so once that's done you can just get out of your browser and you can get out of the command line and then you'll see it's here now so if we go into the folder there is a whole project there we don't need that we just need to get into the font so if you go back into that github repository it'll tell you which folder it's in but i'm i believe it might be an app and then assets and fonts so there you go here are all the fonts here now if we click on a font it works now i hate to say this but i i hate reminding you but just use this for test purposes do not use it in a production environment this is strictly educational so now that we have these fonts we need somehow to load them onto our project the easiest way to do that would be to use something called transfonta so if you go onto google and type in transfonta.org and that will take you to a page uh, which is basically an online generator okay so what we want to do let's just say we want to use the light bold and regular that's all we want to use just highlight so keep your finger on the control button and click the ones that you want and then drag them into transfonta it will upload them up to transfonta and once it's done you'll see the green lines here um, and you can change your settings here but i'm going to leave it standard because this is all we need so then all you have to do is hit co uh, hit convert and that is automatically going to create the css needed and also the file type needed to put these fonts on your actual website so right now it's in queue we'll just wait for the queue to finish and for it to create the fonts okay so transfont has done its job and you can download the kit or you can preview it so if we preview it you'll see that our fonts have been created and they work perfectly and if we go to download it's going to download a zip file with the fonts and the css in there so let's open up this zip file i'll get out of this and i'll delete that go into my pro i want to go back into my project so i'm just going to go into visual studio code and open this in file explorer I'm going to create a new folder called fonts and inside there i'm going to drag so we'll just open this thing again so this is a zip file that we got off transfonta and i'm just oops i'm going to drag them into here okay so now we have our font files inside our project then you can click on demo and it will show you a demo again but we don't we don't need that so we can delete that but this this is a file we want it's a style sheet so if we actually drag this into visual studio code if i can which i can't let's just open it up and it's opening up in notepad for me so we'll copy the code out of it and we'll go into our project into our style.css file and at the top of the file we'll paste it so now that it's there we want to reference where the fonts are located so those fonts are there they're in the fonts folder so we just have to go to each of these ones to the url tag there and just do fonts forward slash cool all right as you can see there are three types of fonts you've got the bold the regular and the light and the font weight for the light is 300 font weight for the for the regular is normal and the font weight is bold for the bold one you could change it you could make it say bold to be 600 and regular to be 400 okay so now we've done that let's make it work on the site it's very very easy to do that all you need to do is just copy the name of the font paste it there and then put the font weight and it's important because if the weight the default weight of the website is different to one of these weights then it might look a bit blurry so let's just do the caption will be a font weight of 600 which is the bold 
and then the light one will be the the caption underneath will be font weight 300 cool so let's go into our project now so this is what it was before the font if we refresh it you should now see that we are using Sophia Pro as opposed to the standard Arial. So I'm just going to, not the standard Arial, so the, the font that I had there before, which was Arial. So as you can see, we're using a premium font. And the beauty of this is that this will work on every device, phone, computer, iPad, all of that, because we are hosting the fonts in a WAF format, which is just a different type of font format that is read by browsers. And we're using the font face uh, method in CSS to tell the website where the fonts are and to call them a specific name. And then we use them in our project. So that's how you do it. You could obviously do it with any font you want to find on GitHub or any fonts that you have purchased or any fonts that are installed on your computer. And that's it. So again, this is strictly educational. Good luck and thank you. And I hope you have learned something today. Cheers.